I've put it out of my head to forget this awakening ever since my meeting with Mayor Walt some time ago. The man was clearly insane and had lost all touch with his former self. He was a different person at any given time with no control over it. He couldn't provide any help to me for my situation, so I focused on Keanua, the Leaden Key, and Theos since then. But the Dalmgon sisters knew that hope was still within me, even though I came to them so that they could give me information I needed to track down Theos and put an end to Wadwen's legacy. My sanity is of little consequence, I suppose. If need be, I'll jump off a cliff and end it all afterwards. But stopping Theos comes first. Sure. Did you hear that? About our awakenings being permanent? Of course I did. I? If those Delamgon are right, you and I are stuck with our awakenings. Not quite the news I was hoping for. No, it's got us both, doesn't it? It just means we've got to focus on finding Theos. Yes, focus on the goal. A sensible perspective, particularly in the midst of such uncertainty. And while I hate to turn the subject back to myself, this all has me thinking about Isselmir. And I'm stuck with her now. Hmm. It's time you dealt with this, Aloth. I know. He sighs, and on the bright side, I've got plenty of time to figure out how to deal with her. Hmm. Like it or not, she's a part of you, and she could be a source of strength if you learn to work with her. It's strange. I've lived with her most of my life, and I've always seen her as an adversary. It should have occurred to me the day she stood up to my father. But there's something about being too close to a situation to see it clearly. It will be a relief to stop fighting her. I don't think you have a choice if you want to keep your sanity. Even as he says it, something struggles within him. The muscles in his face twitch and his skin quivers. His eyes roll back in his skull, exposing slivers of white, sweat beads and glistens on his forehead. After several seconds, he sighs and looks back at me. That wasn't as difficult as I expected. I think deep down I've always hoped to find a solution elsewhere. When I was a child, I always thought my mother would come home with a mysterious cure or that my father, without knowing it, could somehow send her away just as he called her forth. I can't pretend that I didn't spend years of my arcane training hoping that one of my instructors would have the answer somewhere in his grimoire. When I joined the Leaden Key, I hoped and believed that, with enough loyal service, I'd gain the ear of someone in the organization who could help me. Even when I met you and realized your unique talents, I hoped that you might be able to reach into my soul the way I've seen you do so with so many others. I've been looking for someone else to solve my problem, and now I realize that I've got to face it on my own. That's how it's supposed to be. You search for answers elsewhere and find them in yourself. Well, that's a charming way to think of things. And not an unpleasant one, either. That reminds me of something else the Delamgon said. About the gods not being real. The, he says it quietly as if afraid someone might overhear him. I didn't get that from what they said. They, they did tell us to pray to the gods, so that can't be entirely true. Yes, I suppose so. Still, I can't help but worry at the state we'd be in if that was somehow true. If there were no power guiding us in this life and shepherding us to the next. <laughs> Let's just hope that's not the case. Well, true words were never said. If there are no gods, I can't imagine what will be behind the creation of the universe and where we're going and where we've been. I may not really like them, but I can't imagine life without them. We should get moving. Right. I've got a poison to deliver to somebody before I go and pray to these gods whether they're real or not. They have to be real. 
I just didn't like them. I didn't think that they didn't exist. Strange. Well, hopefully this will go smoothly. What I've written in my journal. While I already have the poison, I can still take the baby and bring her to Wardra in Blood Sounds to follow through with Samok's plan. I convinced Bleda to give me a rather potent poison. Since Samok's already expecting a potion, I should be able to dupe him into drinking this. Well, let's hope he believes it. There he is. Samok crosses his arms over his scarred chest. Something else? give him the poison. Here's the potion you asked for. He looks in the vial in my hand back to me. Something's wrong. His eyes narrow. What are you trying to give me? This is distilled essence, really. He rushes at me with a cry of rage. Hey, everybody get into proper position. Durance, get up in the corner. Same thing with um, Sigani and Alof. Keep some off busy, please. Aider, I'll take this warriors. No. Get into the corner. Get into the corner. friends to help out with this fight.
some off more. My boat. Riff. Riff. Focus on Samok. Hey. Help. Keep hitting him. Keep hitting him. May I help? He's almost down. Look how injured he is. Keep hitting him. Lavaru beyond Smock stone, smock stone. Uh, uh, 
Yes? Wow, I think I need to spend a night at a tavern after that. Almost! Oh, man. That was quite the blow to the head. Well, we didn't get to poison him. We just ended up killing everyone, which is not exactly what I wanted. I hope that this doesn't destroy what we came here to find. Uh, there's a neat shield here. Oh. You might be able to use that. Ow, oh, my head is so bad. I need to go rest. Let's just take everything we find. Store it for later. Yeah. Certainly not what I'm I rich. wanted, but can you do? Take everything. Ready, watch We've it. earned it. Though simple and adorned, the blades are made of sharp and finely tempered steel. Yeah. We've taken everything. It's a chest. If something is locked, I can't try to unlock it. Ha! Huh. Lurus looks me in the eye and gives me a slow nod. Well, we did it the hard way. I'll get it Got open. Got it! For winning that fight, I say we've earned everything in here. Get down to what Lyris has to say. He doesn't like it. I don't care. We're done. I hope you're happy. Virtue guides your hand. Carrot. Alright, after that... Oh. I've been contacted by the steward. The unworn path has been completed. That's the... Adventure that the Grieving Mother was sent on. We report. Among the kind wayfarers, in the event that a member of the Order dies of natural causes, it is customary for the Paladin to request, oh yes, it was a burial. The road to Red Flower Lake turned out to be even more dangerous than the elders of the kind wayfarers had expected. They believed that the attack against Adram Delphar's funeral procession had been carried out by ogres. Instead, Grieving Mother and kind wayfarer initiates discovered Otoans, twisted two-headed ogres of incredible size and ferocity. Recovering the paladin's bodies was costly, with five more initiates dying in the process. In the end, the grieving mother and seven kind wayfarers reached Red Flower Lake. There, they held a service for Adrian Delphar and the others that died to make their way to the summit. On the way back down, the initiates placed marked cairns along the trail to indicate when it had been cleared by kind wayfarers and at what cost. So she some ha has some kind of boots that's enchanted magically. That was quite the involved adventure the steward had sent her on. He requests somebody, Barolt, a prestigious visitor, has arrived at Cadnua. Uh, a Nadirian dignitary has arrived at the stronghold. He requests my aid with an upcoming meeting with representatives of the Fisher Crane tribe near the Thane Bog. Okay. But that would mean I'd have to leave. Uh, I don't think we even have enough time. I can't, I can't face that road like this, barely holding it together. We weren't given enough time for it. I'm sorry. Let's go to the end and rest. The Ethic Knoll. The Ethic Knoll is a group both fascinating and dangerous. 
An ancient druidic order, its beliefs fall well outside what the average person might imagine of druids. Though details are sketchy, the ethic Knoll would seem to have originated in the White March, as the order itself consists mostly of dwarves. The traditional druidic chants of the ethnic Knoll speak of the people as a collective whole that created a necessary balance through their strict adherence to the purity of their line. This has been interpreted by the historical chroniclers to mean that there was a time when only dwarves were allowed to be ethnic Knoll. Residing now in Twin Elms, records of the ethnic Knoll date back to well before the settlement had arrived at its present name, and in fact, some information places them in Twin Elms even before the Glan Fathoms arrived. If this is truly the case, the Ethic Knoll are one of the oldest Druidic orders in existence. Their beliefs don't conform to what is normally viewed as a Druidic viewpoint. Sacrifice, blood, fire, and an intense drive for balance in all things well beyond most Druidic standards pervade their rituals. Core to this is the dogma that if you want something from the universe, you must also sacrifice something into the universe to maintain the balance. Nothing can ever be received without something first being given. If you perform the sacrifice, your desires will always be satiated. The simplest example of the sacrificial balance as explained to the author went as thus. Say you are one of these ethic null, and say you want your daughter's marriage to go well. You don't want problems, so you ask one of the elders what you must do. You're told what the appropriate sacrifice is, and then you perform it. In this case, it could be as simple as throwing some coins into lava, giving the metal back to the earth, sacrificing something that is important to you, right? But the requirement is always different, and you don't know what is expected of you until you're asked. The more significant requests, the more significant the demand, and most things of true value must be paid in blood. I was told of people removing fingers, toes, even whole limbs. One farmer was reputed to have sacrificed his youngest son. Another good question many people have raised is in regards to the Glan Fathoms. Why do they allow such a potentially violent, possibly dangerous group to live near Glanfath? Why not force them out? Rumors are that the Ethic Knoll are able to make from an ancient recipe a unique war paint, apparently blood-based, and they are the only people in the world who can. The Glan Fathoms, it is said, have come to believe this war paint provides tremendous advantage in combat, and the residence of the Ethic Knoll in Twin Elms is predicated on the fair trade of the substance. So we have angered them. We've gotten in the way of the sacrifice he was looking for. Right. And killed him instead. I don't feel bad for them one bit. 